Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advantage at Autodesk, and today I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks in applying assembly joints to a Tormach vise. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to show all the assembly joints as well as the motion links on moving this, showing the movement of this vise. Now, where do we download the vise? Well, if you actually go to Tormach's website, and search for vice, uh, you'll come across a couple different vices and vice jaws. But if you scroll all the way down, you're gonna see manuals, data sheets, technical docs. You're also gonna see now the solid models. And I actually picked the 5 inch CNC vice solid model and, and used the step file rather than the iGIS. The iGIS comes across as surfaces and you have to repair them. And we're gonna save that as a whole nother video of repairing bad geometry. But the, the step file comes across great. So back in Fusion, what you're gonna do is, the nice thing is that we now can just, under File, go to New Design from File, and actually just upload or open up a step file right off the bat, rather than uploading to the cloud, translating it, and then saving it off. So this is a very quick way, if you don't have internet access, where you just wanna open up a step or an IGES file or some of these other file formats as well. So once you do that, this is how it's gonna look. If I Hop back over here, it's just going to look with no colors, you can apply all the colors you want, and you can see I have three bodies when I open up the bodies folder. We want components for the joints, but we need more than three bodies, right? Because if I turn off these other bodies, these, I have a set of jaws here, as well as these are the hard jaws, um, I have the knob, all that's still one body, so we need to split things up. The first thing I want to do though, is you see my time my timeline's not on. So by default, when you open up an imported body, there's no timeline, and if you wanna turn this on to capture the design history, if you just right click on the top level and come down to capture design history, activates the timeline, and anything I do will be captured through this process, which is, which is really nice. So let's go back over, I'm gonna turn on all my other bodies, and uh, a quick, Shortcut is if I hit the S key, it's a great filter to find commands or, or, or operations or even features I like to use often within Fusion. So if I type in split, it will filter out all the features or icons that have split in it. So I can actually add split body to the shortcut key or silhouette or remove them. So it's a very efficient way to speed up this process of, of designing or even programming with machining. So I'm gonna do split body. Something to keep in mind too is depending on what workspace you're in, it caters to that workspace. So if I'm in model, I could add model uh, icons. If I'm in sculpt or cam, I can add those specific ones. I'm gonna go and pick split body. From here, I'm just gonna pick this body to split. What's my splitting tool? Pick this face, say okay. And now I have five bodies right here, which, which actually looks really good. The only thing though is if we look at, if I turn off some of these other ones, oops, right here, you can see that this is still all one body, but I want the knob to be separate. So right click again, say repeat split body. I'm gonna split this body. What's my splitting tool? I use this face. So now I have that knob that I wanna show the movement with. And I can turn on all my other bodies so you can see. So I'm gonna rename them all, but before renaming them to make it simple, I'm gonna create, take all these bodies and make now new components so I can apply joints to. So if I shift select the top and the bottom, I'll pick up, pick up all the bodies, right click and say create bodies, com create components from bodies. Now I have all components that I can play, apply joints to. So the first thing is let's rename this. Let's say, you know, this is my jaws, just double click on it and you can rename each one. Actually, let's uh, capitalize that guy. Jaws, and then this is now, let's say the hard jaws as well. Giving you guys a couple typos that you guys can see. Um, and we got the knob as well as the base. And let's call this movable jaws. There we go, okay? So you can see that everything really just moves off, right? And these are all one piece, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna to do Control or Command Z to go back because I'm running on my Mac today. Now, the first thing is, well, I don't want the base to move, right? So what I'm gonna do is double click on, the, on that base, highlights the component, and under Assembly, I'm gonna say, actually, let's do this. If I right click on the base, I can say Ground. So now this is ground and it's not gonna move. Well, the hard jaws is not gonna move as well. So if I right click on that and say ground, 
Now that's not going to move. Only these guys can physically move away. Well, I know that these, the, the, the movable jaws, these two pieces need to move together. So what I'm going to do is under assembly, come down to rigid group and say, well, what are the components I want to move together? Well, this one, as well as this one. And when I now say, okay, I move them, those two move together as a group. So let's now start showing some motion here, right? Really simple. We got everything already set up. Let's show what's, how things need to work. I can either hit J for joints and that activates joints, but this is actually really key is I already have everything positioned correctly, right? Now, instead of applying joints, I'm going to do as built joints because everything's already in the correct position. And two, I want to know the distance between probably this face here to this face here so I can tell it exactly how far it needs to actually move. And you'll see exactly what I mean here. I'm just going to change my units to inches real quick. And now under inspect, I'm just going to pick this face, come around, pick this face. And that says the distance is about four inches. And now under assembly, go to as built joints. I'm going to say this component with uh, this component, right? But it's not going to be rigid. I'm going to say slider and I want, let's say the position to be that guy right there at that point to slide, but it's the wrong axis. So I can now drop down under slide, come down to the X direction, which is correct, which is what I want. Say, okay. And now this will move in that direction. I'm going a little too far off, but it's in the correct direction. So now what we want to do is kind of set some limits. So if I come over to joints, you can say I have slider, click on the little edit joints limit. Now this kind of gets tricky, you know, be patient when you try this out, but what I like to do is under minimum, under maximum, I'm going to say negative four, okay, and it's going to move negative four degrees upward and keep the maximum at zero, so my initial start. So when I say okay, this now is going to move exactly that, that distance and stay between that. Also too, we got to do the same thing on this side. So I'm just going to come up here to assemble drop down to as built joints because it's already in the correct location. Now say, well, what's my component? Well, this is my component and then this is my component. Now what's the position? Well, let's go ahead and, and highlight here and that's not the direction I want it to go and I don't want it to slide. I'm going to say I want it to re revolute and let's go with the, the Z axis. I don't know if it's, that's correct, the Y. Let's try Z out here and say, okay, so if I move it, it now rotates in that correct direction. So how do I get this to move along with this? Well, the, the grand finale is under assemble, drop down to motion link, and it's going to say, let's just capture the, uh, do a capture position, a snapshot. And the joints under joints I'm going to pick is the slider and the revolute. And now it's going to show me that exact movement of what I have for the slider and the revolute joint. Go and say okay. And as I move this, that will move together. And there we have it. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about working with assembly joints, applying it for a Tormach vice or any vice out there to show that movement. Because it's always great to use this in machining to so use it for collision detection when you're when you're going through your simulation. Hope this helps out again. Follow me on Twitter and uh, thanks again guys.